Hello and welcome to another one of my videos. In today's video, it's going to be a bit of an educational one. Before I get into it, I I need your the viewership's opinions on something I want to do. So I I want to make it a membership channel, but I want to make it accessible to everyone. So I, I've set the membership fees quite low. I think it's two ninety nine, three ninety nine, and eight ninety nine. The problem I'm having, which is frustrating my end, is every time I I put a YouTube video out, as much as I want my content to be free or as free as it can be, I lose time. I lose a lot of time and I I struggle to kind of devote the time I need to to put out the educational content that I want to. I'm not sure if this is a feasible idea, so I thought I'd ask you guys first. You know, it's I'm not going down the route of fully corporate it's just it would allow me to have more time to really share with you guys the ins and outs beyond the quick 10 minute tutorial i could give like 30 minute talks and, and stuff like that and i could do it in a way where it doesn't cost me i'm not trading off my my work time because it would replace what i'm doing with the coins and and it would turn it into what I can do to kind of help people or buy it at a small cost. Let me know what your thoughts are on it. Um, regardless if it's a yes or a no, I'll, I'll always put content out if people watch it. It's just I want to put, I want to turn it into an informational slash educational channel that is low cost that people can benefit from. Anyway, let's get into the video. So today's video, I want to talk about so this is a gold dealer gives advice video. Expectations versus reality when selling. So you would have seen these two coins. These have been in my reserve. This is actually sole trader stock, so it's nothing to do with the business. I've been holding on to these for tax reasons. If I sell them, I can make money, but if I hold on to them, I'm not gonna pay the added tax on it. So I'm just rolling it over to the next tax year. So that's fine. This is a coin I picked up today. Now, all three of these coins are collector's coins. And when people come to sell coins like this, you'd hope that you could get the highest price possible. And sometimes you can. You know, it's, it's not always the case that you can't. But sometimes you can't. You know, a lot of the time you can't. This coin here, so 5,000 mintage on this one. Current spot price is around 1400 I'd expect this to be a £1,500 coin. But the reality of the situation is when I'm in my in my position at, at where I am in trading, I don't often have the time to hold out for £1,500. I've got to get it in and I've got to move it on. If it goes £50 over spot, you know, that's a good day for me. That's That's the reality of it because that's half a, a day's wages of what I need. I would love to hold out and, and make top dollar, but at the same time, there's nothing wrong with le leaving meat on the bone for someone else if if they want to trade it or if they want to add it to their collection. There's, there's nothing wrong with that. Now, the person I bought this from, I, I was talking to him over a cup of coffee and he, he paid a thousand pounds for this when it came out. So him selling the spot to me is it's not a big deal. Again, he could have maximized it, but now he can put the money into better things. Now the expectation for these coins, because of what they are, is they're probably worth more than bullion. But in my situation, am I going to get more than bullion out of them? It depends on a couple of things. If I've got the time frame to do it, you know, or if I like it a bit more than the average. I think this this is mintage about two fifty, so this is a high relief koala. You would have seen this coin before. I kept it because I liked it. I didn't want to give it away, but there's going to come a point when I do sell it, if I can't find the right buyer for it, and let's be completely frank, it's a hard move. It's very limited in mintage. But how many people collect high reliefs? How many people are willing to pay? Like it's probably worth seventeen, eighteen hundred pounds to the right buyer. But how many people are willing to pay that when spot is sitting at fourteen hundred? It's not like a, a high end sovereign where there's going to be constant demand. 
there's not many high relief collectors there's not many collectors of koalas and when you get to the bigger sizes i've i've always preached that you should buy the smaller sizes because you're opening yourself to a market where there's more buyers once you get to one ounce and up not many people can afford to buy it that's not to say there isn't people who have money to buy one ounce coins fairly regularly that is true but you're holding yourself to the whim to a smaller amount of people so what happens is the expectation is it's a 17 1800 pound coin or it's a 1500 pound coin or in this case it's a 1600 pound coin what's going to happen is you're going to list it at that price and then it's going to drop and then it's going to drop and then it's going to drop until you can find a buyer so what you have to do is you either have to buy when they come out and pay a, a fair price at a time and let economics do its thing in terms of inflation and gold moving up it does go up and down and up promotion i've said that many many times i might turn that into a hat or a t-shirt actually <laughs> or you have to buy these types of coins when the deals do come come about and that's okay i often throw coins out like this where they are worth more but i sell them for less because the reality is i've got bills to pay and that's okay it's i'm okay with selling it for that price now it's not just modern one ounces so these coins here i bought these the other day i've had two offers on this one on both occasions the person who wanted to buy was like it's a bit high for me now this is only 10 pound more than this one but when i offered this one they were like well i don't want that one and it's like yeah i know but i don't want to sell for slightly less so the expectation is this is just bullion the reality is this isn't bullion it shouldn't be priced higher because it is a bullion coin they are restrikes but when all things are considered people would choose this coin over this coin so this one should be priced higher now if i get to a point where i do need cash flow the chances are this is going to come down in value maybe this will come down in value as well but i'll probably drop this and hope that spot price rises for this and that's okay but as an individual when you're selling your coins it's very easy to get caught up in the hype that what you buy is high premium and when it comes to sell it you're going to struggle to obtain that high premium a classic example is the one ounce queens beast gold coins now if you go to another dealer so there's one very well respected well renowned online dealer they have queens beast in stock they've got them in stock for i think it was uh, 1800 to 2000 depending on the design how many people are going to spend 1800 to 2000 if that's coming to me i know i'm going to struggle to move it i'm going to be buying it for spot i'm i'm not taking that risk my my job isn't to kind of maximize like i will buy it for spot off the chance that i can get more out of it but i can't trade on promise or potential i have to trade on the market in front of me and if it's only going to get 50 quid over spot regardless of what the true value is i'm i'm not going to pay it and that's a real shame but again it's an expectation versus versus reality thing you have to work out or you have to kind of forward think what type of buyer is going to buy my coin in the future and are they going to place the same value on it as i place on it now in terms of your your sovereigns such as i've got this one on my side because i haven't taken it to the lockup i don't worry like these are really rare there's going to be a buyer for this it's a high-end coin there's going to be a lot of people like actually i want that for my collection because you don't see many of these but when it comes to one ounce coins you've got so many different types of variety you really have to be selective in in what you buy in terms of the one ounce coins now the smaller you go i always say buy quarter ounce buy quarter ounce or ten pounds semi numismatic gold such as your perf mints or your pandas because there's always going to be buyers because people can afford it people can afford to buy a quarter ounce or a tenth ounce can they afford to buy a one ounce that's the question. 
So I just wanted to give you an insight. It's I hope you found it useful. If anyone wants to comment on my kind of proposition, you know, I, I would be happy to hear your views on it. The last thing I want is to completely alienate people. But I'm, I'm trying to work out where the middle ground is, my end. So I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you on the next one.